Hey guys, wanted to let you guys know about a quick giveaway that we're doing. Uh, we're giving away a gear wrench toolbox, which is actually nicer than this one. Shipped right to your door, you don't have to worry about anything, but uh, you have to click on the link down below, which will take you to our website so you can figure out how to enter. There's multiple ways to enter, but we wanna see you guys with a nice setup to motivate you guys to get into the shop, work on your projects, just like what we're doing with all of our multiple projects. Because if you're not filthy, you're not rich, you gotta work on your stuff, and we wanna help you do that. So without further ado, um, click on the link, uh, but also check out today's video. Super sweet project that we're working on, and uh, I hope you're excited as I am. Here we go. What's up, puppy? Cutting up all of our angle iron. We're building this. You can see that. And we're changing, turning all of this steel just into a jig for the convertible. So we got to start getting going on this. Um, we got a big order of parts coming in. And we need to start mounting all of the parts square and straight, just like houses. Start on the bottom, work your way up. And if you start square and true at the bottom, the rest comes a lot easier. So, here we go. don't know if I want the hundreds of hours that I need to invest in this car, but it also comes with a pile of new parts. It's in really bad shape, but it's in better shape than the four door that we have. You know, everybody takes the gamble of what it's truly gonna be. There's a lot of stuff hid on these old vehicles. There's a lot of things to owning a PV that I do not think are a positive, but we're still gonna build. We're going to start disassembling the leaf. We're gonna pull the battery out of it and put it on the frame. Crown Vic welded in the front and then the G35 on the back. If we were gonna diesel, maybe torches, but we're working on electric stuff now. So we'll use Sawzall precision tools. Okay, so Vince welded this thing nice and square and true and level. Um, we're still gonna finish welding. We're gonna make paddles off the back that are gonna be welded solid in line with our brace. And then we moved our brace farther ahead because we're gonna make um, a piece that is bolted to the front so we can slide it back and forth for different applications. We don't wanna weld that solid. So we just need to make sure that that comes out square. And then that's where our tire will be mounted. Then once those four mounting points are made, we're gonna take our Cranvic front end and stick it at the front. We've marked where our center line of our wheels are and um, the center line of the, the rear. Mount them as low as we possibly can. And then basically we're gonna build a car on top of that. We're going to mount the motor and gearbox and the battery management system in the back, make drawings of a frame, and we're gonna try and get this mandrel bent out of aluminum two by six square tubing. That'll be the hardest part of it, to keep everything light. It's gonna be pretty heavy if we do it out of seed or anything else, they don't really want to. So we're gonna try the aluminum. I might not even be able to get aluminum, but we'll see what happens. And then once that's all figured out, um, this frame can hold the battery up, can hold everything else in place. And then basically we take that car and plunk it on top of this. This is actually pretty cool. Even just seeing the front and the back, it's like, this is gonna be a car. And this is how it starts, just an idea. Here we go. All right, have Vince welded up all the steel for our jig. We started out with just two L brackets and that will be the main runner of the car, nice and straight. And then we welded a C channel in between and that has our little Princess Auto casters on there with brakes. And then we welded the back half solid and then bolted the front half so that if we get a different car with a different wheelbase, we just 
take this L bracket, slide it back and forth wherever we want. Now we've got a square base to start with, measure corner to corner, make sure that's the same length both ways. We made it bigger than it had to be. Um, we can always cut it smaller. For now, this is the right width. So, Crown Vic welded in the front. We have to narrow that yet. And then the G35, we're going to weld in the back. But I think we are actually going to put the G35 in backwards. I've changed my mind twice now. But what we're gonna do is make a stand, just uh, place the bolt, um, some angle iron down and the same height where our tires will be and then we'll raise this wherever we need it to be for our frame we'll leave that adjustable we might have to go up because of the hump on the back of the convertible so we're gonna lift that in place and go from there there we go we want the engine and the transmission coming up this way and the least amount of real estate right here like that's and two feet I'm being generous, but basically work from here to there. Okay, so we bolted the, um, the rear axle in place. We didn't think there was any issue of actually running it backwards. It's adjustable so we can turn the wheels. We just want the engine and gearbox is gonna kind of end up in the back. So that's where this hollow is. So it was done for a reason. And, uh, and we've debated this a couple times <laughs> as you can see scratched up. Now for the front, we're using the Crown Vic front end. So what we're going to do, because that one is way too wide, we're actually going to make it a couple inches, an inch narrower on either side. We're going to have the tire sit in quite a bit and have the rims flush, but if we're having a really low car, we need to be able to turn the wheels because we're not going to add air ride. That just adds too much weight. So if you're wondering why our arms were too long, we're going to start by basically bolting our stands to the hubs which is the same height as the back ones and then they're out on the side then we'll make a brace to mount the center of it and then we'll cut as much as we need out slide the pieces together bolt them where we want them and then weld them in place right pooch hey here camera oh oh camera oh behave can you talk talk good girl have a pot have a pot you good girl yeah can you go to sleep? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. You're tired. Go to sleep. Sleep. You're tired. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Talk. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, so the bag is bolted in place. We figured out the height of it. So we measured up where our frame is going to be without the suspension on it. But we are at um, about a foot off the ground, which is perfect. We need the frame as low as possible. So what we did was cut the shocks out of this uh, Crown Vic suspension and then drop the frame to the same height as the back. So the frame will come out, go around the battery, come back in, meet the rear, and then go up and over. So um, it's too wide. So we've got blocks for this to sit on. We didn't bolt, we bolted that wheel down to the position that it needs to go. And now we'll slide this one in the full six inches. And Vince is gonna weld this brand new Crown Vic aluminum, high quality Ford steel that we did not get out of a junkyard. And the weld is gonna look amazing. <laughs> in a stiffening plate or two. <laughs> Actually, it's not even that big of a deal because the front end doesn't really hold any weight. We'll, we'll put the frame in here and then we'll build a, a cross member right across and yeah. we'll bolt, bolt it right through here. Yeah, so that you know, takes all the tension off and then we'll put the floor, basically the trunk or the frunk, the front <laughs> trunk, yeah, the frunk <laughs> on the bottom here yeah. and then that'll be where we keep all our storage. So. Nice. So yeah, <laughs> don't, don't get too carried away. Just weld it yeah. and then we'll start bracing the convertible. Like it's like it's got a nice buzz to it when you're welding. Yeah, it's clean. It's 
good. Yeah? Yeah, it's going in there nice. Right on. For being oh, cast. The crown fix lasted so long. Yeah, it's not even pitted very much, like, for being old. Yeah, yeah. Does the sand last going really help? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gets all the oil and that paint. Mm -hmm. Such a, just hampers you so much trying to get a clean weld in. Yeah, yeah. It won't even accept it usually. Like, yeah. It just pushes it away. Right on. It's going in nice. Beautiful, Vince. Nice work. Whoever safety is this monstrosity, we'll just look at that and go, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna let this one go. <laughs> <laughs> this Leaf was one of the first electric cars, all electric cars, and it was the best selling electric car globally until Tesla beat them in uh, 2017 or 2018, I believe. Okay, so I, I know that batteries are not 100% zero emission. There's emissions in mining the batteries and that, but Nissan really went the extra mile building this car. They used a lot of used materials to build the car. So apparently even the stitching in the seat is made from recycled clothes. So, so this stitching could be somebody's underwear. So the biggest thing with EVs that will hit you on the spot is the range anxiety and it is real. Um, <laughs> you're constantly calculating how far you have to go and how far you've driven and, and how much uh, charge is left. It is crazy. So if you're one of those people that don't like your gas needle on your fuel level gauge going below half, um, imagine driving around with your battery light on all the time. Um, they typically come on with 50 to 60 kilometers left, um, 30 miles, something like that. And that's that right now, that's basically um, the car that we have left with the, with the worn uh, battery. So you're constantly thinking about that um, and it's not a pleasant feeling. When you have a longer range vehicle, it's still like a Tesla is still 20, 30 minutes to charge up at, at stations. And if you watch uh, uh, Gears of Gasoline, they actually drove a Tesla across the States and he said it, it was fine when we were driving there, but when it was time to head home again, you can still only drive two and a half hours and then you have to charge again. So um, at that point, you're like, I just want to be home. Uh, th there's a lot of things to owning a v EV that I do not think are a positive. When you first start driving it, it's super quiet and that's really neat. And then it wears off and you realize electric cars absolutely kill the entire driving experience. It's like going on a date with somebody and them not saying a word. They're just like, yeah, you're on a date. So what, it's boring and you just want the date to be over. It's exactly the same with driving an electric car. The driving experience sucks. There's no feedback from the engine, from the car. There's no vibrations. There's nothing to excite the driving experience. And that's, that's too bad for anybody young getting into cars or thinking about getting into cars. One, they can't fix them. And two, there's no point in driving. You might as well just hire an Uber or hope for complete 100% autonomous vehicles to get you to where you're going because your phone is 100% more interesting than driving a car. So I understand now why Tesla has so many gizmos and gadgets to keep you entertained. The driving the car is gets very boring very quick, but we're still gonna build it. All right, so we've got a G35 mounted at the back. We've got our front narrowed and Vince did an amazing job welding that. That just looks amazing. We're going to start disassembling the leaf. We're going to pull the battery out of it and put it on the frame and just basically have it sitting here so we figure out where the floor is. And as soon as the battery's in place, then we can draw a sketch of where the frame is going to go and start getting those bent up. Um, I imagine that's going to take a little bit to, before I get my hands on that. So we got to get that done as soon as possible. So we're going to start by unhooking the 12 volt battery. The, uh, you still need a 12 volt battery to actually kickstart everything. The skid plate's already off of it because I wanted to see what the battery and stuff was involved in here. But um, we'll unhook the 12 volt battery, which I think is on its last legs anyway. And then uh, pull the battery out. Here we go. All right, so one plug, Let's pull the blue pin and slide that back and one, one other pin. Uh, we'll have to change this plug when we go to a bigger battery. And then just a couple bolts in the frame. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. I think eight bolts. And the battery's down. It's like the quickest fuel tank drop ever.
so much rest, but nice thing is that our floor should be in mint shape. <laughs> and uh, we'll, use, we'll use another battery pack that's newer. <laughs> Uh, 10 millimeter socket. This this drawer here, or is it in my pocket? It's a missing, isn't it? Is the deep one there? No. Is it up on the shelf there on the top of the toolbox? No. Yeah. Yeah, you just have it. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Keep going. Oh, wait, one more here. Basically, we're gonna put the battery on the frame where the seat is, because basically the seat is right. It's so weird having this in the shop. No diesel engine, no turbos, no nothing, just a box. I think uh, some six by sixes, we'll lay it across, and then uh, pick it up with a tractor, and then we'll play it, place it on top but I'll figure out exactly where the driver's seat is in relation to the floor, and then we'll put the battery in place and then mark it on the frame, and then that's where she stays. Thanks. Frame's kind of mounted on our jig, front and back axle. Now I guess we'll pull this uh, motor out. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to pull a leaf motor properly. Unfortunately, time is money. What we do know is that everything will drop out from the K-member underneath. We'll pull the battery. It does have a radiator with coolant in it, but that's only to cool the charging process. It doesn't actually cool anything while we're driving. So I don't know if that's even connected to, yeah, that's probably connected to something in here. We'll pull the battery, we'll leave the brakes alone, drain the AC, and then uh, yank it out the bottom and see what we're left with. Here we go. <laughs> generation to do their swap so I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea but this works much better for our favor because this is just three cables the ones I saw had the three prongs coming down and this is just the three cables so this uh, the battery management and the converter uh, the BMS and the converter are all separate from the motor and the gearbox so I can still put the gearbox in the proper way um, exactly how it is take the ac compressor off this one will be going in the c10 i don't need ac in the convertible that's just a little bit silly 
So, um, after we're done spilling coolant everywhere, which is very typical, I don't know how I get dirty working on an electric car. This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, this will actually fit the proper way in front of the battery. And then we can, because these are just, this is the only cable and this is the only plug, which is for the AC and it's irrelevant. We can just take this whole thing, shove it in the trunk, turn around if we want, and it will still drive the motor the way it's supposed to. So this is a really cute little setup. And if we can somehow either add batteries in the front of the car or still do the conversion for a bigger battery pack and get 150 mile of range on it, that's, uh, that's awesome. Now, we'll take the axles off and then see if the splines are the same as a G35, because you guys are all wondering that. <laughs> Basically, I can just plug it in. So, uh, we'll unbolt it. And then, uh, or is it already unbolted? No, it's still connected. We'll unplug that, take the tires off. We're just take the axle out, and if it, if those splines are magically the same as the hubs on the on the G35, then I'm, I, I, that's hilarious. They're both Nissan, so why not? Okay, so, um, yeah, here we go. Plug on that plug, not a big deal. Wow, this is this is really easy. <laughs> here we go. Okay, now not if this is a deal breaker, just it'll save one step. Will it fit? Oh, it doesn't fit. Son of a gun. Dang it, Nissan. Not a big deal. Here we go. That doesn't fit at all. This hits that while this is still on the ground. This is where the ground level would be. This is terrible. I didn't, this whole project is, whew, I should have measured better because there's no possible way that this is gonna fit. <sighs> well, I guess that's it. I don't know what else to do. Wait, wait. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually gonna work really, really well. Um, so I was all in a welder. All you really need, torches make kind of a rough cut. If we were gonna diesel, maybe torches, but we're working on electric stuff now. So we'll use Sawzall precision tools. So what we'll do is we'll build a cradle to go underneath it, just for support. And then another cradle to basically go over top. We'll utilize this mount somehow on that cradle on the top. Um, same with on this side. The upper mount will be the bracket to hold the, uh, the battery control module and the converter. So um, the wires gives us the room that we need to put that wherever we want. And all we have to do is flip these two to get um, reverse to be forward and forward to be reverse. It's gonna work. There you go, Vince. Start uh, making this look a little bit nicer. And then, uh, we're on our way. This is, I'm like 90% sure that it's gonna work. <laughs> now it's just making everything else fit and work. Um, but very, very exciting. Here we go. Okay, so that will sit roughly there. And that actually puts my mount up high enough underneath here that I can put a mount there. I can build another nice little bracket here for the mounts right here. Um, and then we'll make our own, and we'll have to probably make this a bit higher and do the second mount to the frame here, which will actually work out really, really nicely as well. So from here, uh, I'm gonna strip the rest of the frame. I gotta take the steering off, I gotta take these mounts off. So basically just taking this off, that one, and that one, 
That needs to be up a bit higher, but unfortunately uh, that's not going to be a direct bolt on. And then take the steering off. This bolt pattern for the wheel bearings are not uh, the same, so I'll have to figure something out axle-wise. And then once I have these mounts off, we can um, start mounting the electric motor rigid. Here we go. All right, so I finished my mount on the left side here. That should probably be fine. And finished the mount on the right-hand side here, and that'll probably be fine. And this front one, that's no problem. That'll just kind of bounce. The nice thing about electric is it doesn't vibrate, so it'll probably stay. Um, but in all seriousness, I'm just trying to find my height. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind, making sure that my CV joints don't hit the bottom of this. So I stuck my axle in, even though it's not in here. Um, it clears this bottom one with about a half inch to spare, so that should be fine. As long as this front mount is okay and all that torque doesn't move on it, but we'll worry about that afterwards. Basically, I'm going to use these little mounts. These were the ones that came off of a, a gas engine in a stationary unit. Um, and then because it's rubber vibration here and here, should be fine. I'm gonna tack everything in place before I start getting too carried away. I just wanna make sure that if I wanna extend this mount to make the mount for the BMS, I, I do that. I don't wanna weld that on again afterwards. It's a lot of work to cut a hole big enough for this to drop into like a square tubing and then bolt in place type of deal. And then that's about as far as we're gonna go. Once this is all mounted, uh, we'll take the body off of the convertible, put that on the hoist, roll this underneath the hoist, and then start dropping the body on and seeing where this ends up in the trunk and where I can build my uh, shock tower for the suspension because this is gonna sit up a bit higher. As soon as that's all set, then we can order um, or give the designs to the company that's gonna manual bend the aluminum for the frame. So, here we go. All right, so a lot done in this episode. Next episode, we're gonna make the entire frame out of aluminum. Now, this isn't common because aluminum will, will crack and, and when it flexes, but we are going to an independent rear suspension and an independent front suspension, and we have a giant battery that holds everything kind of square and together. So I don't know if it's gonna work or not, so stick around for that episode because it's super cool how we uh, put Vince to work and make him swear a bit more, and MTH fabrication, so definitely uh, wait for that episode. It's it's already kind of done, but we've already done a pile of work and we're, we're making these episodes, so they kind of go close together. Um, a quick reminder too that uh, we have a giveaway in a toolbox a gear wrench toolbox really nice setup we want to get you guys in the shop we want to get you guys working so support us by buying some merch and checking out our website becoming a member and uh, that enters you into that draw you're gonna you wear clothes anyway you might as well just buy a t-shirt and you might get a toolbox to put that t-shirt in as a rag later when it gets really worn after three four years that's what i do anyway thanks for watching guys stick around lots more good stuff coming up uh lots of stuff happening at dghd again on the other channel that's why we're kind of all over the place uh it's sporadic more on that channel but we got kevin skid steer going together we've got um a 90c with the pto pins out of it so you definitely want to check that out but uh, as always if you're not filthy you're not rich you gotta go out there and work on it here we go